Well, I've been here for 11 years. We pack it, so I'm still here, so it's a great room. Back in the day, I worked at Motown Studio A, is about two miles from here, and now I'm working here, and I still go to the museum and play sometimes, so I've traveled two miles in my career. Yeah, I was there every day, so I did Cloud Nine, Just My Imagination, Psychedelic Shack, Someday We'll Be Together, Nitty Gritty with Gladys, it just went on and on. Norman Whitfield came in with an arrangement of a song on Cloud Nine, and I had a wah-wah pedal. He says, that's it. So in two weeks, I was backing up the Temptations in the studio on that record, and then I was there all the time. Check it out. Here. Early on, Dennis Coffey tried collecting the records he played on, like J.J. Barnes, The Shades of Blue, Jamie Coe, The Volumes, a whole lot of Northern Soul back before his Motown days. Oh, yeah, this thing's yeah. probably worth a lot of money. Yeah, they are. One time I sold a record for $1,400, and then I stopped selling them. In the 50s, in high school, they called him the rock and roll kid. I started doing blues, and I started doing rockabilly. I was 14 at McKenzie High School. I had my rockabilly guitar, and I'm doing blue suede shoes and singing it at an assembly, and the kids are going nuts. And I got to tell you, this spinster teacher thought it was too suggestive, and she pulled the plug on my amplifier before I could get done. That's the first record I ever played on. I'm Gone by Vic Gallagher. If you listen to the Vic Gallon record, you'll hear me, hear me doing a rockabilly solo at the age of 15. Wow, you get paid for playing music. It's pretty cool. Not gonna keep changing for a little long. Got me a brand new device, it's bigger. We did a session called Crazy Little Satellite about the satellite. And so we actually recorded that record at United Sound, and Barry Gordy was the arranger on that session. The record didn't come out in a year, so we were only like still, I don't know, 16 or 17, so I says, well, obviously this record business isn't happening, so I just told him I, I wanted out of my contract and I wasn't interested in the record business anymore. I don't think Barry probably even knows to this day that that's where I first met him. After high school, Coffey joined the Army Airborne in Kentucky. Being airborne is crazy anyways. They give you combat pay for jumping out of planes. I get back, still only 20 years old, so now I'm playing six nights a week and making a good living doing music. Back in those days, you could work six nights a week in a club and make a living at it. And then I was a member of the Royal Tones, and we were signed to Harry Balk's label. Del Shannon was one of his artists, so, so I played on Handyman with Del Shannon, Little Town Flirt, all that stuff. Del Shannon told me that the Beatles used to open up for him in England. That little town As the British invaded, Coffee played on, joining recording partner Mike Theodore. They became record producers, all while Coffee worked at Motown as a freelance funk player. Coffee and Theodore produced Rare Earth's first album. See this guy right here? That's me, because the guitar player got lost on the way to the picture, so I put on sunglasses and got in there. They also produced Rodriguez. He's my most memorable artist. The Searching for Sugar Man Rodriguez. And Coffee put out a record of his own. This was the very first one. An LP and a single. This is It's Your Thing, you know, the first instrumental I had out. And it's Coffee and the Lyman Woodard Trio. It didn't sell like the Isley Brothers version. Coffee had to wait a couple years. It was 1971. This is uh, the Evolution album. Got now for Dennis Coffee, the Detroit guitar band, and Scorpio. I said, well, you know what? What if I write some songs and I'm going to make it like a guitar band? And I'm going to have guitars doing horns and string parts. So, and that whole thing just, just took off, but it took a year before that was a hit. 
it's been said Scorpio's breakbeat would help lay the foundation for the hip-hop sound. Once Motown left, there were no sessions here anymore. I mean, there was nothing here for, for me to make extra money doing that. I said, you know, maybe this is the time for us to go out to L.A. because I always wanted to do a movie. Black Belt Jones. Black Bell Jones, yeah. It's a karate guy. And, uh, the combo black exploitation and karate? It was. It certainly was, yeah. Enter Jim Dragon Kelly. I was in L.A. for three years, from 73 to 76, and I got up one day and I said, you know what, I don't even like it out here. It's not fun for me. I'm a Detroit guy. Detroit is just, it's my vibe. Back in the midst of a recession, Coffee had a tough decision to make. I went to work on the assembly line at General Motors. Someone realized who the new hire was. Worried the guitarist's hands could be ruined, he moved Coffee to a less dangerous job. Coffee went to college, became an expert on the lean manufacturing process, and he trained the people running the assembly lines. I made a good living at it. Coffee kept playing and recording, too. Can you get the other stuff, Dave? All right. Dennis can play anything. He is just amazing. So we've been down to hear him at Northern Lights, and you know there isn't anything he can't do. And when he came out with this kind of a new genre that fits into our schedule, we thought it'd be great to have him. Coffee's put together a combo for the Greater Detroit Jazz Society at the Shields Restaurant in Southfield. Jerry McKenzie played with Stan Kenton, Ray Teeny with Paul Anka. That's Dave Tatro on trumpet, Scott Gwinnell at the keyboard. We're playing more contemporary jazz, not the far out avant-garde type jazz. It's just straight ahead American songbook that we're doing in there. To be able to play with a master, I get to check that off my bucket list and you know, and hopefully do some more of these gigs because it's thrilling to play with a, a legend. For a six string instrument, I'm still a student of the instrument. For six strings, there's a lot of possibilities left yet, you know, on the guitar.